for his life after gunshots ring out at an apartment complex. The details coming up. And it seems as if a dangerous trend could be developing. Police now investigating a second accident involving a pedestrian and a train. Live from case at 12. The news at noon starts right now. It was a busy morning for San Antonio police responding to reports of a shooting that happened at an apartment complex on the city's south side near 410 in Pleasanton. Our Jonathan Colto was at the scene this morning and tells us a teenager is a victim. It was a sudden and unexpected wake up call for the people who live here at the Rosemount at University Park apartments. Gunshots popping off close to two this morning. That's what woke myself. Everybody in that building, on the 42 building, woke up. Once we heard that, we all came out there, and there was about 10 cops. Chavez witnessing the scene as it unfolded. Police say there was a gathering inside one of these units, four men and two women. I took video on most of it there, but the cops were running around trying to find somebody. We didn't know. At the very corner, we know some good friends there, and we came down there. They're already trying to save somebody. That somebody, a 17-year-old who was shot in the chest after police say a fight broke out. Everything after 12 o'clock, in San Antonio in this particular place is not a good place to be outside at night. It's important to note the gunman did take off in a white SUV with another woman and a man. The shooting remains under investigation. We'll update you as more information is made available. Reporting from the city south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Another shooting landing a 16 year old in the hospital in critical condition. He was shot in the neck. Police say that teen was shot during a fight that broke out around midnight in front of an apartment complex not too far from I-35 and Southwest Military on Briggs Avenue. They also say that the vehicle was hit as well during that gunfire. The teen rushed to the hospital. So far, no arrests have been made. And officers are investigating another shooting, this one on Dutch Myrtle near 281 in Wurzbach Parkway on the north side. A woman was detained following that shooting. Police tell us the woman and a man were fighting when she fired shots. The man was grazed in the head by one of those shots and taken to the hospital. New at noon, a fiery crash on I-10 near De Zavala, backing up traffic for hours yesterday, and now it's turned deadly. Police say that a man had been driving a Toyota which hit a concrete barrier on I-10. It hit that barrier because an 18-wheeler hauling gravel had a blowout and hit the car. The car traveled on the top of the concrete barrier and then it hit a metal pillar. We have learned that the man in that car has died. Police say a Jeep was also hit by that 18-wheeler with the blowout. The driver of the vehicle taken to the hospital. That person had non-life-threatening injuries. The name of the driver who died has not been released. San Antonio police are hoping that superstition about bad things happening in threes doesn't come true. So far this week, they have investigated two cases of people being run over by freight trains. The latest one happening this morning. It was in the area of West Summit and Blanco Road. Katrina Weber reports, unlike an earlier crash, the man who was hit survived. While passing through a north side neighborhood, this freight train made a somewhat sudden but necessary stop. Afterward, the conductor told San Antonio police he was heading down these tracks not far from West Summit and Blanco Road when he saw a man standing in his path. He says he did what he could to bring the train to a halt as quickly as possible, but still hit the man. Fearing the worst, officers set out on their investigation. For a while, police had trouble finding the man. They say he was actually hit about 150 yards down the tracks. They searched that area at first for him, but then later found he was in front of the train here. When they reached him, the man who was in his 50s was still alive, suffering from critical injuries. He was taken to a hospital. He's the second person hit by a train this week. Early Tuesday morning, police found a man dead, someone who they believe fell asleep on a railroad bridge on the city's northeast side. The train hit him near Interstate 35 and Loop 410. Police described him and the man who was hit today both as being homeless. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Despite that truck blockade in Reynosa ending yesterday afternoon, traffic still slow at the border as DPS inspections continue. Those more involved in inspections were ordered by Governor Greg Abbott. Our Alicia Barrera is live at the Rio Grande Valley along the border at the far Reynoso International Bridge. So Alicia, give us an update on how that traffic is moving this morning. 
slowly, very, very slowly. We were out here until about 11 last night, here meaning the Far International Bridge, and these truck drivers were making their way through until about 11 last night. That's around the time that DPS closed this enhanced inspection site, and then they opened things back up around 8 a.m., but let me tell you, that line is still miles long. and It's extending way into the Mexican side over there in Reynosa, but, you know, these drivers are just happy that things are finally moving after four or five days of being stuck on that bridge. So Alicia, the operations for truckers, this is far from normal, correct? Yes, so yes and no. We've been learning so much as the hours pass by. Being able to speak to these truck drivers has helped so much. So they cleared up some things that this isn't the first or second inspection. They actually undergo, and when we're talking about produce specifically, they undergo four to five ex inspections, several of them being federal. So you're talking about with the Department of Agriculture, with FDA, of course, with Customs Border Protection. And then here, this DPS site of inspections has always been in place. But what they explained to me is that before, maybe out of the 20 trucks that were in this area, two would actually go through these inspections that are very detailed. What they're looking for, and you'll see some action over here I want to show you. This is to my right. So these trucks that we we see here there are about four right now they have been pulled over they have been cited for some violations whether that's their lights their brakes um, their mirrors any little detail these DPS troopers are flagging them down and saying hey you need to fix this before we can get you back on the roads but again drivers tell me that this site here has always been in place some of them have made it through here before but what's changed since Governor Abbott made this order last Wednesday is that every single truck driver uh, commercial truck driver that makes it through the border has to go through this inspection site here real quick Alicia what what is the mood of these truckers after especially having to sit for so many hours and go through these inspections well mixed feelings they're excited that things are moving because they get paid by the trip they have a base salary but they're also very nervous as a blockade could happen at any minute they don't know what's going to happen but also in mexico big celebrations are underway because it's holy week so these next two days are huge for mexico and that means that mexican immigration officials they'll be closing their borders earlier we're hearing about two 3 p.m. today, so they're saying that that's just going to add on to these delays that they've been experiencing for about a week now. Great job out there on the border, Alicia. Thank you so much. And we're going to help our viewers a little bit. There's a lot involved when it comes to Title 42, and that is the issue, the order that started all of this. KSAT Explains team has been breaking it down for you. Just scan the QR code on your screen to watch the full episode. The Kids That Explains team looks at how the asylum seeking process is supposed to work and how Title, For Title 42 has upended that entire system. You can also watch on KSAT Plus, available any way you stream. The man accused of opening fire on a New York subway train appearing in court today. 62-year-old Frank Robert James arrested yesterday after an intense manhunt that lasted hours. ABC's Aaron Katursky reports from New York. Frank James, the 62-year-old police say shot 10 people on the subway and injured 19 others during the Tuesday morning commute, is now charged with a federal crime related to terrorism. The government will prove, among other things, that James traveled across state lines in order to commit the offense. James was taken into custody after a more than 24-hour manhunt that followed a terrifying rampage involving smoke grenades and a 9mm handgun. We used every resource at our disposal to gather and process significant evidence that directly links Mr. James to the shooting. In the chaos after the shooting, police said James simply boarded the next train and emerged from the subway one stop later. From there, he disappeared into the crowded city, hiding in plain sight. We were able to shrink his world quickly. There was nowhere left for him to run. Police are now trying to figure out where he spent the night and how James entered Manhattan, where in the middle of the day on Wednesday, he effectively turned himself in, calling the NYPD and saying, I think you're looking for me. Members of the public pointed him out to police. He was just walking like normal, like, like 
he didn't do anything before, like something. It's like normal person. Mayor Eric Adams announced the arrest to a relieved city. We got him. The arrest concluded a multi-state manhunt, but the investigation is not over. Police are still trying to establish a motive, poring over social media posts, including one the day before the shooting that said, I wanted to kill people. I wanted to watch people die. Frank James is appearing in Brooklyn federal court on a terror-related charge that makes it a crime to carry out a violent or premeditated act on mass transit after crossing state lines. It is just a single charge, but it packs a punch punishable by up to life in prison. Aaron Katursky, ABC News, New York. Coming up, it's back. The city says it is opening nine local parks just in time for you to stake out your favorite Easter celebration spot again. We're going to tell you when you can claim your spot. And the Spurs season didn't end the way they had hoped. The Pelican C.J. McCollum was on fire last night, and the Spurs were pretty much in a drought, like right here. More coming up in sports. I mentioned the Spurs were in a drought. We're in a drought pretty much right here. So we, the Spurs match us kind of. Kind well, of we have itty bitty <laughs> chance for rain this weekend. We do. We're monitoring chances of late day storms both Saturday and Sunday. But I don't want you to worry too much about Easter, especially for your morning and early afternoon plans. The storm chance will come in later in the day. And I'm going to show you the latest future cast coming up in the full forecast. That'll be along in just a few minutes. Speaking of drought, the aquifer down another seven tenths of a foot today. Stage two water restrictions are in place and the good news just keeps coming. Oak very high today. It was 16,000 yesterday. We're above 18,000 today. Our highest count so far. You're probably feeling it. I know I am. At least molds are low with a count of 390. We'll talk more about Easter weekend coming up after the break. A San Antonio Easter tradition is returning. The city now lifting the curfew on nine city parks so that families can camp out for Easter. It begins tonight at 11 o'clock. You can start setting up your camp with your gear and stake out your spot to celebrate Easter. Among the most popular parks, Brackenridge Park, McAllister, O.P. Schneibel, Southside Lions Park, and more. The city urging everyone who decides to camp out to make sure to clean up their areas when they leave. And the San Antonio Fire Department reminding people to be extremely careful if they barbecue. The city park curfew goes back into effect on Sunday night at 11. So now you can drive by one of those parks on Sunday and smell all that barbecue and just, oh man, that ought to be good. And the good news is, weather should be fine. Yeah, this is, it's nice to be back to the normal park situation at Easter time. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely great to see that. It is going to be a bit warm this weekend in the afternoons. Take a look at the next few days. So we've got your Friday and your Easter weekend. We'll be in the 80s today, 80s again tomorrow, but then by the weekend our highs get back into the mid 90s with some isolated shower and storm chances. More on that coming up here in just a couple minutes. 63 our morning low in Catula, 60 here at the airport, 43. Fredericksburg felt awfully nice out there this morning and the reason why very dry air in place. Temperatures are climbing into the 70s now. It's actually near 80 at Stinson, 75 at the airport, 72 Bernie stage, but our air is nice and dry. Our dew points are down in the 20s and 30s, even some low 40s, but overall it's feeling very comfortable out there this afternoon and humidity will stay low for the rest of the day. So even as our temperatures start to climb into the mid to upper 80s later on today, um, it's going to stay pretty comfortable with low humidity and a nice breeze out of the southeast for the remainder of the day. Winds about 10 to 15 miles per hour. A few gusts close to 25 miles per hour here or there, but not overly windy today. And again, with the lower humidity, it will stay comfortable through this evening. We will start to pick up some cloud cover overnight, and then things will really start to change in a big way on Friday. Current view of satellite and radar. We do have some clouds starting to move in from the south, just some fair weather clouds there, uh, but we're still going to get in plenty of sun this afternoon. There's an area of surface high pressure centered just to our north and to our east. That's keeping things really clear across central and north Texas and into parts of Oklahoma and Arkansas. Wind direction around areas of surface high pressure is clockwise. So what's going to happen tonight and by tomorrow morning is this area of high pressure is going to move east and away from us. This starts to change our wind direction even by later today. Southeasterly winds off the Gulf of Mexico. You know what that means. Higher humidity comes pouring back in overnight and by tomorrow morning. Look at our dew points. So right now 
They're in the 30s by tomorrow morning. They're going to be back in the 60s and that's where we stay all day tomorrow and even through the weekend. So we do have some muggy days ahead despite the drier air that's in place today. So turning muggy tomorrow, we'll also see a big increase in cloud cover overnight through tomorrow morning. We also can't rule out some areas of patchy drizzle and even a few really, really light showers early tomorrow morning. So muggy and somewhat damp early on Friday, a little bit of clearing tomorrow afternoon. Cloudy again to start the day on Saturday. Mix of sun and clouds into the afternoon Saturday. That bumps our highs into the mid 90s. We'll be monitoring for a couple of stray thunder showers north of the area on Saturday. But as we get into Sunday, that's where we see a slightly better potential for a few showers and storms to develop north of San Antonio, north of Highway 90, and then try to wander our direction by the evening and nighttime hours. So that's why we really want to stress for your Easter plans on Sunday. The rain chance will come later in the day. So for any morning, afternoon activities, things will be quite toasty, but the potential for any showers or storms won't come until we start to get a little bit closer to sunset. So just keep that in mind. Don't panic when it comes to your Easter Sunday plans. We'll reintroduce another low end chance of rain by the middle of next week. Coming up next half hour, I'll show you the latest drought monitor and a look at a potential weather pattern change a little farther down the line, guys. Thank you so much. Your Easter bunnies look like peeps. Are those in peace? They are peace. Are they? Okay, well. You the love Cowboys. Them or you hate them. <laughs> the, the Cowboys going crypto. We'll explain coming up. Spurs and Oilers last night to take on the Pelicans in the play in game. Up until that point, every home team had won. Spurs try to buck that trend. Devin Vassell with the hot hand early. He connected on a pair of threes to push the Spurs out in front. But. Got in early foul trouble. DeJounte Murray picked, picked up two quick ones. Jakob Pertl allows the Pelicans to take a four-point lead going into the second. That lead ended up growing up to 10 before the Spurs come back with some more Vassell threes and Trey Jones keeping things close as well. But C.J. McCollum, monster, 19 points second quarter for a season-high 25 in the first half to lead the Pelicans to an 11-point lead at halftime. We go to the third quarter. The Pelicans blow this thing open. Brandon Ingram, Euro step to the hoop. Pelicans up 12. Giannis Valsunas with the little jumper right here. Big guy, little jumper. That got the lead up to 21. Spurs cut it down to six, but the CJ hits the three, and he finished with 32 on the night. He also finished the Spurs season. We stayed in it, got back in it, but then we made the same mistakes again that we did in the first three quarters as far as uh, non-physical defense. It's the playoffs. Uh, you got to be into people. Uh, the physicality and the grunt is really important. And we didn't have it for three quarters. Got back into it like we always do. But then we made some of those same mistakes. They were physical. Uh, I think we picked up our physicality towards, you know, the, the second half. Uh, other than that, the first half, we allowed them to just walk around and do what they want, uh, not be touched. Uh, you know, so that's really what that was, letting guys be free. And, you know, CJ, hell of a player. Uh, Brennan, you know, hell of a player. You know, two tough guys to contain this lead uh, night in, night out. And, you know, they showed it. No grunt, no nasty. Spurs in their season, losing to the Pelicans, 113 to 103. In the Eastern Conference play-in game, Trey Young and the Hawks hosting LaMelo Ball and the Hornets. The winner is a step closer to the playoffs. The loser goes home. Hawks flying high in the first. Young lobbing it to Clint Capella for the dunk and the foul. Hawks Kevin Huerta hits his third three-pointer of the quarter. Atlanta up 10, and the Hawks put the game away in the third, outscoring the Hornets 42-24. Atlanta wins 132-103. to 103. They'll face Cleveland next. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. And the Dallas Cowboys have become the first NFL team to have a cryptocurrency partnership. Cowboys owner Jerry Jones announced a deal with Blockchain and their co-founder and CEO Peter Smith at a press conference at the Star in Frisco. And the business of football wasn't far from Jerry Jones' mind, though. He was asked if the Cowboys would trade up from the 24th spot in the upcoming April draft. I would trade up uh, this draft um, and uh, just going in as much as you can say about it until you see what's there, or who's on the other the line. But uh, yeah, I would trade up to uh, since we're down as low as we are in those first two or three rounds. 
And remember, former Cowboys head coach Jason Garrett, he's still close to football, but not as a coach now. He'll be an analysis for an analyst for the NBC's broadcast of USFL football, which begins this Sunday, April 17th. Garrett coached the Cowboys for 10 seasons. He led the Cowboys to three NFC East titles in five seasons, but lost in the divisional round all three times. He ended up moving to the New York Giants after that. He was their offensive coordinator for two seasons. And remember before his NFL career at quarterback ended, which included a backup for Troy Aikman. Garrett played for the San Antonio Riders. Remember them? Of the World League of American Football, the San Antonio Riders. Remember he, Garrett had two brothers that also played. That One was predates on me, man. You weren't here when the San Antonio Riders <laughs> no, were playing? Come no. on. How old were you? I was young. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Way young. Still ahead, changes coming to your 401k that could affect how much you contribute to your retirement every year. And also coming up, protests are growing in Michigan as people question how a traffic stop ended up with a man dead. Police body cam video and the story coming up next. The investigation continues into a deadly police shooting in Michigan overnight. Protests growing after video was released showing an officer killing a man he'd pulled over for a traffic violation. ABC's Alex Perez has the latest. Overnight, demonstrators in Grand Rapids, Michigan, demanding the officer who shot Patrick Leoya be held accountable. After community pressure, authorities Wednesday. No, no, no. Stop, stop. Releasing video from the officer's body camera, dash camera, a bystander's cell phone, and a nearby security camera all capturing the fatal encounter April 4th. Stay in the car! The unidentified officer pulling 26-year-old Leoya over because the plate on the car wasn't registered to the vehicle. Leoya gets out, eventually tries to run. He's also seen fighting with the officer and wrestling to get the officer's taser after the officer deployed it. Stop! Okay. After demanding Leoya release the taser, the struggle ends with the officer on top of him drawing his firearm and shooting Leoya in the head. And the grapple, the body camera, at one point stops recording. The test is gonna be whether at the view of a reasonable police officer whether that deadly force was needed to prevent death or great bodily harm. Attorney Ben Crump says Leoya's family is devastated and in disbelief. He's on his hands and knees facing away from the officer. There are so many other things the officer could have done instead of pulling his gun out and shooting him in the back of the head. And authorities say they have not publicly identified the officer, a seven-year veteran of the force, because he hasn't been charged. Once the investigation is complete, the case will be handed over to prosecutors who will determine if he'll face charges. Alex Perez, ABC News, Chicago. The two men charged with impersonating Homeland Security officers for the last two years were released at home detention to await trial. The decision came after three days of arguing between prosecutors and defense lawyers over whether the two men had foreign ties or were operatives of a hostile government. Earlier this week, the federal judge in the case said the Justice Department did not meet the legal standard required to keep the men in jail pending trial. The men are not allowed to go to airports or foreign embassies, or they can't talk to any of the federal agents they allegedly duped. Democratic Party officials just approving a plan that could shake up when presidential primary calendars are held. The new plan does away with the current traditional set of early states, Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, and then South Carolina. The updated process would prioritize more diverse battleground states that hold primaries, not caucuses. But the question is, which states will get to hold their primaries first in 2024? Those four traditional early states can apply to keep their places. However, Iowa's spot would be especially threatened in part because of the largely white state is no longer a battleground. Some scary video out of Florida. A camera captures a man attempting to set a home on fire. Here it is. You can see a man run up to the window of this house, throw something inside, and then all of a sudden flame, boom, flames just start coming out of that window. Police say it was a Molotov cocktail, and you can see him run out of the frame, and then another Molotov cocktail gets tossed over the roof before rolling and then landing on the side of the house. 
It happened in Fort Pierce. Three people reportedly inside that home at the time. Luckily, they're doing OK. Police trying to find that guy. A teenager in Los Angeles counting his blessings after his gaming headset stopped a bullet. 18 year old Jonathan Gonzalez was on his PlayStation earlier this month when he says he felt something hit his head. He looked up, found the bullet hole in his bedroom window. He ran to his parents room shouting he thought he'd been shot. The gunshot had ripped his curtains down after striking him in the head. The bullet apparently ricocheted against the wall, landed in his bed. Officers responded, but they did not find the shooter. Outside with live cam, oak is high, humidity coming back, but it's Easter weekend and we're going to have a blast. So let's look on the bright side. Hey. How about that? I like that, David. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, it's going to be a really pleasant day today. Warm this afternoon. We're back in the mid to upper 80s, but humidity is low today. By tomorrow, that changes and we'll talk about why coming up in just a little bit. Let's uh, look at the pollen count. If you haven't seen it yet today, you probably have felt it. Oak very high again today with a count of over 18,000. Molds are low at 390. This is the highest oak count we've seen this season, but we're right at the peak of our oak pollen season. So at least it's spiking when it's supposed to. I guess uh, as we head into the rest of April um, and then into May, those counts really should steadily start to fall. It's really great out there now. We're starting to climb into the upper 70s, but mostly sunny and low humidity, relative humidity only 25% and a nice breeze. East northeast winds uh, about 10 to 15 miles per hour and we'll hold on to a really nice breeze and low humidity for the remainder of the day. So by 2 p.m. we're in the mid 80s topping out right around 86 around San Antonio. A few spots south of Highway 90 could jump into the low 90s this afternoon. But again, lower humidity uh, will keep things feeling not too shabby through the afternoon and early evening 78 by 8 o'clock tonight with continued drier air while we're sleeping. Things go back the other direction by tomorrow morning. It will be muggy again. How does that impact your Easter weekend? We'll talk about it coming up in the full forecast. That'll be along in just a bit. Thank you so much. All right, sitting in traffic. It might raise no. your blood pressure, but what if it's elevated all the time and how high is too high? With more, here's ABC's News, Ike Jachi. High blood pressure damages the inner lining of your blood vessels, causing them to become stiff and narrow. It's often called the silent killer because it can increase your risk of heart attack and stroke without making you feel any different. When you take your blood pressure, you'll see two numbers. Both of them are important. The top one is called the systolic blood pressure, and it tells you the pressure in your arteries when your heart squeezes and pumps blood to the rest of your body. The bottom is called the diastolic blood pressure, and it tells you the pressure in your arteries when your heart is relaxed between heartbeats. A normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80. If the top number is between 120 and 129, then you have elevated blood pressure. But if the top number goes over 130 or the bottom number goes over 80, then you have high blood pressure, also known as hypertension. The Harvard Medical School shared tips on how to take your blood pressure properly at home. They recommend sitting comfortably with your back supported, your feet flat on the floor, and your arm resting on a table or pillow at the level of your heart. If you measure your blood pressure at home and find it's consistently too high, you should talk to your doctor about it. With this Medical Minute, I'm Ika Giacci. Still ahead, a historic city in Venice now offering tourists something most people have never even seen before. We're showing you what's new at St. Mark's Square. And lawmakers in D.C. are working on a bill that could transform your 401k. The details are straight ahead. This is your top headlines from Cheddar News. The Transportation Security Administration announcing that the federal mask mandate now going to be extended to May the 3rd, adding an extra 15 days. The mask travel requirement had been set to expire this coming Monday. That's until the seven day average of COVID cases in the U.S. started trending up 25 percent over the last two weeks. Meanwhile, Amazon, for the first time in their history, going to charge their sellers a 5 percent fuel and inflation surcharge. The new fee will begin on April 28th and will only be charged to sellers who use Amazon's fulfillment service. 
prices. It's uncertain if this fee is permanent or temporary due to the uncertain oil futures and soaring inflation. And TikTok announcing Wednesday they've now started testing out a private dislike button for comments that in select international markets. The goal is for users to identify comments deemed irrelevant or harmful and help step up community guideline enforcement. A, a final decision on this feature is expected within the next few weeks. And that's your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Other consumer news, hold on for this one. Elon Musk could be the new face of Twitter. He has offered to buy all of the remaining shares of the social media giant that he doesn't own. According to a filing from the SEC, Musk is willing to pay $54.20 per share, which would value the company at nearly $43.5 billion. Musk says this cash offer is his, quote, best and final offer. According to the source from Twitter, the company will have a meeting with staff today to discuss that offer. The current outbreak of avian flu is not creating a shortage of eggs this Easter, but Americans are going to be paying more for them at the grocery store. The consumer price index shows that the price of eggs is up nearly 14 percent over last year. It's expected to keep on climbing, too. The American Farm Bureau says the outbreak of avian flu likely worse than the last major one that started back in 2014. 50 million chickens and turkeys have died as a result of this pathology. Uh, influenza and right now the CDC says the risk of the bird flu infecting humans is low. Your retirement savings may be about to face a major and inevitable change. Lawmakers in Washington are working on a bill that could transform your 401k. The bill is called the Secure Act 2.0 bill. It's expected to reach President Joe Biden's desk at the end of the year. If it's passed and signed, it could require most employer-sponsored retirement plans to enroll eligible workers automatically at a 3% level. That would increase by 1% until you're contributing 10% of your paycheck annually. Workers would have the option to opt out or change their contribution level. The plan would also delay mandatory withdrawals and limit penalties for those who fail to withdraw on time. No matter how many oops. no matter how many times you've been to Venice, here's a reason to always go back and something most people have never seen before. The Vici, I should have let you do this one. You've okay. been there. So you read this but the, the what is that? Um the Procurati. Okay. Vici. Wow, that's good. Keep going. You got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's a famous spot in St. Mark's Square. It's now open to the public. I've never been there, always wanted to. This marks the first time in history that it has happened. The ground level of the more than 600-year-old building has housed popular cafes, but visitors are now going to be allowed to go up to the fourth floor of it. A five-year renovation was recently completed, <laughs> creating space for an exhibit called the World of Potential that offers interactive games and hands-on experiences. Procurati. One more time. But you got to say it like you're a thousand. Yeah, yeah okay. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I don't, I don't, how do you say that in Texas? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you know your, your strength and your... Not strengths, David. Yeah, good, good one there. We've got some fair weather clouds that have moved in over the past couple of hours. Otherwise, mostly sunny and comfortable. Here's the latest drought monitor. This is out today, and things obviously have not improved. In fact, an area of exceptional drought that's as bad as it gets down to the south and west of San Antonio has expanded. So from south uh, of Eagle Pass there through Dimmit, LaSalle, McMullen counties, even now north into Pearsall, even southern Medina County, in an exceptional drought. It is going to take a while for us to put a dent in this low rain chances over the Easter weekend and a potential weather pattern change beyond that. We'll talk about it all coming up in the full forecast. Welcome back. Hope you're having a great Thursday. Getting closer to 1 o'clock now, and we're starting to see some spots sneak into the low 80s. It's 80 in Catula, 82 in Pleasanton. Meanwhile, 76 New Braunfels, also 76 in Kerrville. So it'll be warm this afternoon. 
no big surprise, but it will be comfortable with drier air in place. So here's how your high temperatures play out today. Look for a high around 86 in New Braunfels, 84 Canyon Lake, 89 Poteet, 90 in Pleasanton. So if you're south of Highway 90, I wouldn't be surprised for you to jump into the low 90s this afternoon. But again, it won't be terribly uncomfortable with a nice breeze and also lower humidity. Our dew points are in the 30s and 40s, so it feels pretty nice out there. Winds are out of the east for now at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. So we'll have a good breeze in place for the rest of the day, even a few wind gusts up to 25 miles per hour at most. So it won't be overly windy, but you may notice the breeze at times this afternoon. Again, around San Antonio, a high near 86. Sun goes down right about 8 o'clock this evening after that temperatures fall into the 70s. And if you've got plans tonight, it'll be comfortable with a lingering breeze and drier air. But by tomorrow morning, things will be a lot different. We started off with clear skies today. Tomorrow, we're going the other direction overcast with even some patchy drizzle and spotty showers possible through the first part of the day on Friday. There's also going to be much higher humidity in place. You'll notice it as soon as you step out the door in the morning. As we get into the weekend, we'll fall back into the routine morning clouds, some afternoon clearing. As we get into Saturday afternoon and evening, we'll be watching really closely what happens to the north across parts of central Texas. There could be a couple of storms that try to fire there, and if they get going, they could wander our direction by late in the day Saturday, but it looks like we've got a better chance to see some storms develop to our north by Sunday, late Sunday afternoon, early Sunday evening. Those could also drop south and move our way right around sunset on Easter Sunday. So again, just to reiterate your Easter plans on Sunday, it's definitely Definitely not going to be a washout. Morning hours will be muggy with clouds by early afternoon, starting to see some clearing and then overall a pretty toasty day with highs in the mid 90s and high humidity and a late day chance of a few isolated storms. We'll keep a close eye on that for you. So there's your isolated rain chance through the weekend. No rain Monday into Tuesday and then by the middle of next week, also another isolated rain chance, uh, but it looks like beyond the scope of the planning forecast. We do have a potential weather pattern change to keep keep an eye on. This is seven to 10 days from now, so you won't see these rain chances in the extended forecast, but this is something we'll keep a close eye on for you. It looks like a nice dip in the jet stream um, could drop south over the west coast, and that brings us back into a pattern that allows for rain making disturbances to move in from the southwest. So hopefully um, as we get into seven to 10 days from now, there's the oak pollen count. It just wanted to stick around uh, for one more time to remind you that we're in the middle of oak pollen season uh, beyond the scope here of the planning for forecast seven to 10 days. Hopefully we can reintroduce some rain chances into the forecast may not be anything too widespread, but at least we can get some isolated chances going up beyond here. The scope of the planning forecast until we get there. Mid 80s the next couple of afternoons by the weekend. It gets hotter mid 90s with those late day chances of showers and storms back into the mid to upper 80s through the middle of next week, guys. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. The life and legacy of Patrick Swayze, the topic of a new profile that is airing tonight. We have a preview. A new look at the life and legacy of iconic actor Patrick Swayze chronicles his rise to fame, his death, and his legacy. It's also giving us a more in-depth look into his childhood, in particular his mother, who had a hand in a number of other Hollywood uh, superstars. Here's a preview. Patsy Swayze will always be so dear to my heart. She put me in her dance class when they were not letting any black kids take class with white kids. Patsy was the only teacher in the entire state of Texas that accepted black people. Oh, she was tough. She was demanding. And it's no wonder she raised so many talented people. I mean, she taught Jacqueline Smith. I was very shy and I didn't push myself. And she said, you do have a place in this world in musical comedy if you want it. And I've, oh wow, I've never forgotten it. The dance world demands discipline and tough love. You can't do it by going, oh honey, please point your toe. No, it's point your toe. She just always wanted the best for her children. She was a pretty strong disciplinarian, but I wouldn't trade her with my mom for anything in the world. She gave me the intensity that I have. There's a sense of danger in my work that I never want to lose and I never want to define. And I think much of that comes from her. I always said that he got his ambition and his drive from his mother. 
and his sweetness from his dad. That looks good. That episode is airing tonight right here on KSAT at 9 o'clock and on Hulu tomorrow. He was known for his dancing and mm -hmm. one of our co-anchors of SA Live, known for dancing as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Fiona, <laughs> quite the dancer. Yeah. You know, Mike keeps spreading that rumor every time. And every time he tells that story, I compete in more competitions. <laughs> no. All right. Well, of course, Easter is coming up and we have Dario Arellano from Dario's Bakery here. And we are making Easter bunny cakes, Easter right? Bunny cakes. And yes. you have a tip for us to maybe, you can do this to any dessert really to make it more for Easter. Yeah, definitely. We can do the ears and then we can literally place it on anything to make that bunny touch, needs to touch. So right now I'm gonna show you how to do like a little bunny cake. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna start by adding our ears. So oh, cute. Oh, Look how quickly it just turns. Goodness. Very festive. Make sure to, we're gonna try and imitate yes. that coming up, yes, right? Yes, we are. Make we sure, sure to are. do ahead of time. And then we're gonna start piping. All right, he's gonna continue working on that. We are gonna try a little bit later, but also we have some tips from a the founder of a makeup company based here in Texas. And, she, and you may be doing your mascara all wrong. She has a tip for you. Also, it, citrus trees do very well here in Texas. We have they Liz sure do. with Uprooted Gardens here, and you have a tip for us as well. Yeah, you know, so when you bring them home from the nursery, you probably just love the blooms, but you actually want to be pruning these off. We want the energy going to the roots, not the fruit yet. And that works with anything, even tomatoes. Yeah, even tomatoes, pretty much anything fruiting. Tomatoes, peppers, you name it. Okay, all right. We all get, you know, a song stuck in our head, right? So is there any cartoon or TV show song that, you know, you maybe get stuck in your head and you can't stop singing sometimes? Let us know what that is. We're going to get it stuck in your head. <laughs> okay, you may see your answer in the show in a couple minutes. It's a very, should I say, hippo birthday for yeah. <laughs> for San Antonio Zoo today. One of their more popular animals <laughs> celebrating a birthday. It's Timothy the hippo's birthday. He's celebrating, and you can help him celebrate today. Admission into the zoo is just eight dollars for all Bear County residents. There are several special events planned throughout the day to honor Timothy's big day. He's seven years old Ooh. today. Doesn't look a day over six. Hippo birthday. <laughs> hey, if if maybe you don't have anything to do late this afternoon, this evening, and you want to go to the zoo, really nice weather, warm but comfortable with low humidity. It turns muggy again tomorrow, then hot over Easter weekend with some isolated rain chances later in the day, both Saturday and Sunday, guys. Thank you, Katie, and thank you for watching the News at Noon with us. Those cakes sitting on that table, ooh, my, 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 my. That looked, Got you again. Yep, they did. SA Live starts right now. Today on SA Live, we show you a makeup tutorial less than five minutes with an organic makeup line from Texas. And we learn all about citrus trees. We have a local garden company showing us the basics of citrus tree care. It's a thirsty Thursday. We're making some craft cocktails with a spring twist. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Here come the eggs, <laughs> here come the baskets. Yes, hello and happy Thursday. We have Easter sweets, spring trees, and special sips on today's show. Good afternoon, I'm Fiona Gorsiza. I'm Jen Tobias Jeske, filling in for Mike Osterhage. We continue to count down to Easter, right? Oh, yes, and of course, uh, chef and owner of Dario's Bakery, Chef Dario Ariano, is here with Easter bunny cakes because, you know, that makes us hoppy, right? <laughs> yes, of course, very hoppy. <laughs> You're gonna show us how to make what you've made over yes, there. Yes, it's just no like, pressure. <laughs> there's no pressure, it's something easy, but super cute for the kids so that the moms can actually do for the kids. Oh my gosh, let's Look see it. this. Let's see, so this is what we're gonna, we're gonna, wait, wait, which camera? There we go. There we <laughs> we, that's what we're gonna try and, um, I'm looking at it right now, Jen. Yes, I, I've com I committed to, to memory as, <laughs> as we try to do this. Okay, so what kind of cake is it? So right now we have vanilla cake with vanilla buttercream, which is our signature, uh, one of the signature cakes. And then these are just the cutest 
simple cakes that you can do with the family. We have these ears <laughs> that we previous, previously made for to ensure, you see, anything can be funny. Yes. <laughs> on the cake. Sorry. Sorry. It goes on the cake. I'm you have the, the time. Okay. Time is on. Focus. Okay. So you gotta, you gotta do the ears first, okay. and then you're gonna pipe the buttercream, which is gonna allow you to cover those, um, you know, little mistakes. And then from there, we're just going to Who's making pipe. mistakes, Dario? Nobody <laughs> makes mistakes. <laughs> but they, these are super sweet and delicious mistakes. Do you push from the top? Yes. You Ooh, can push them a I'm little so bit. I'm so afraid. Okay. Just be very gentle. Like that? Uh-huh. Just it, just like that. And then these are just some of the cakes that we will have for Easter. Okay. And then we have mini cakes, colorful mini cakes. We have our mostachon, which is one of our signature desserts. Okay. And then we have the mango <laughs> kiwi right now available. So I'm for back. anyone who <laughs> loves mango, we have the perfect design for you. We have cupcakes, cakes. <gasps> Looks Give so refreshing. Oh, oh you what see? is this? Fairy dust. Better. Oh my <laughs> god. Trying to save the <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So. All right. Let's see what we're doing over here. Let's see who's doing it better. <laughs> Let's see who is winning the competition. I'm pretty sure Mar Mike oh, is watching Mike was us. Here, if Mike was and here, he'd, he'd be winning this competition. Yes, just a little tip. If you are ever working with these kind of cakes, you might want to do the pieces before. So that way you will give them the time to get a little bit um, hotter. So whenever you're handle it, making the actual oh. cake will be easier for you to handle. I see. You okay. see, it's super easy. It's super, super easy. Oh, look, we have... Somebody's winning already. Oh, I see. Oh, Jen's going to town <laughs> over there. Let's okay. See, I, you see? I'm turning it this way because I realize that you actually got this started for me over here with the eyes. Yeah. So. No, yes. We make sure to have the eyes. We actually, this is what we do. We love baking. We want to make sure it's fun for everyone. We do have fun at the bakery creating these cakes. So we want to make sure that you guys at home have fun with the kids, with the family, with everyone this Easter. So <laughs> give us a message, send us a message on social media to order one of these cakes, a paradise, cupcakes, we have anything. And we even have wedding season coming up. Yes, tell us yes. about that. Yes, we are ready for all those weddings for the brides. Please send us a message. Uh, let's set up an appointment, a tasting, and then we will make sure to recreate that cake for you for that special day. Mm. We love making wedding cakes. <laughs> I'm laughing at my cake, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those no, those yeah. are gorgeous and that is why Dario uh. does what he does. Yeah, so what is, <laughs> what is oh your favorite thing to make, Dario? Do you Definitely have a wedding cakes. Or oh, those yeah. are the most, um, I would say, elaborate <laughs> but more fun and special cakes. You know what? You like always make sure to that special birthday with look at that. Oh, that's you're horrible. There. No, that's horrible. It's, then you're gonna make sure to do it sprinkles, glitter. Oh, sprinkles and glitter. Oh, yes. yes, we have lots of glitter. We'll have fix new, everything. Oh, check so, it oh, out. Check look it out. At this we, thing. <laughs> oh my gosh, there's the glitter. See. There you go. <laughs> We're gonna. Glitter will make glitter. everything better. Yes, glitter will Definitely. care. Here, there's some there glitter. Thank you. Okay. Now, if yes. somebody wants to order for Easter, when, yes. when so is the deadline? It's until tomorrow, Ooh. so we are doing curbside pickup to make this um, holiday uh, more faster for everyone. So please send us a message <laughs> on social media, either Facebook, Instagram, and then we'll be more than happy to help you. We have mostachones, we have berry, we have mango kiwi, we have cakes, we have carrot cake, vanilla cake, a variety of cakes. So you just, there you go, look at you. Right? Okay, um, so, I mean, you know, this isn't the only TV show you've been on, although it is the most important. <laughs> um, but you've been on plenty, plenty of others. Tell us about those appearances, because they're so cool. Well, yes, definitely every single um, show, it's very special to me. Like, I do appreciate everything, like, the opportunity to be in every single show. Uh, but, like, it's just, like, you know, SLF has a very special heart. As Place in my should. heart. It's true, right? <laughs> we are here, and then I'm gonna go to the other one. No, just kidding. So you know, you guys are, um, are very, very special to us, to Darius Bakery. We, you guys have been there for me since I started it. Oh, you're gonna make so, me cry, oh my God. We're, we're celebrating Easter. We're not crying. We're we're celebrating Easter. Yes. So please. Um, uh, send us a message. I just want to you see. I, I, I got a little. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. But, oh, but you've you. accomplished so much. You know, the first time we had you on, I remember that. Yes. And then it just keeps growing. So good for you. Thank you. Yes, yes. definitely. It's been it's been a journey, and it's been like one of the most wonderful journey. We are about to have a little surprise for y'all. 
for everyone in wow. the in a, maybe in a few months or something we're gonna have a little news that of course we're not gonna we're gonna be here saying it but for now it's just a little something okay, okay. Wow. we're looking for that golden yes. egg oh yes. Yes. okay all right now of course folks can order online too right yes, yes. send us a message we have social uh, instagram facebook mm -hmm. and then from there we'll just do our best. All you right. see some of our cupcakes. Look at those. Colors. Beautiful. For more oh. information on Dario's Bakery here, you can go to salive.com, click the As Seen on SA Live tab, or scan the QR code on your screen. All those beautiful cakes. Thank you so much, Dario. You're welcome. Thank you. We tried. We tried to mimic you. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. I got so one eye. Now on to the songs we were <laughs> yes. talking about earlier. Is there one song that you just get stuck in your head? Pooh Bear, <laughs> Winnie the Pooh Bear. That's what it is for mm -hmm. Fiona. Yes, Chasing my some honeybees. <laughs> so okay. whether it's a cartoon, my daughter's been playing the recorder, so I have the Do You Know the Muffin Man? That song is oh, in no. my head yeah, over and over. She was doing that this morning. But we want to know, do you have one? Which one is it? <laughs> get it stuck in our heads, right? Whether it's know. something you watch or something you're forced to listen to over and over, <laughs> Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter, and you'll hate us later because they'll all be stuck <laughs> in your head. <laughs> All right. Well, we're all about supporting Texas businesses, and today we're putting the spotlight on a makeup brand that started here in the Lone Star State. Yes, Lamique Makeup is quickly gaining recognition in magazines, on social media. The goal is to inspire women to accentuate their beauty with an organic, clean products. And I got to talk to the founder. Take a look. Love and makeup and kindness. That's what Lamique Makeup Line is all about. It's Texas based, and I'm so excited today to be joined by the founder, Kim Roxy. Welcome. Nice to see you. Hey, how are you doing, Jen? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm so excited. I love your story, um, how your business came to be. Very inspirational. But let's talk about the name really quick and what that means to you. Yeah, so LAMIC is an acronym that means love and makeup and kindness because love and kindness is your true makeup because beauty is revealed and not applied. I love that. I love yeah. that. I, I love yeah. the inspiration from your mom too. I was reading about that. Mm, absolutely. That's why, you know, I have on pink today, um, really honoring um, my mom and she passed away from metastatic breast cancer and my mom wore makeup every day. And, uh, you know, so many women are put at risk by what they put on to make them look good, right? Or feel good, um, but maybe not be so good for us. So I wanted to create a clean, non-toxic makeup line manufactured right here in Texas um, for, for people. So what they need is a multifunctional product. Um, and that is this Revelation Brow Duo I'm gonna use here. But basically I'm showing you this because it has a brow powder in it for my eyebrows. Mm -hmm. um, and then it has like this cream to take and highlight underneath. So I'm gonna show you real quick um, because I believe like seeing is believing. So basically if you take this, what we call sculpting cream and you take and put it underneath your brow, mm -hmm. it's gonna give you a highlight. And everybody's complexion is different. So you're gonna use the one for your complexion. But if you take like a concealer or something, a little foundation even, and just take it right there, even right there on top of your eyebrows, especially if you're working from home and you're doing like Zoom calls and you need those eyes to pop, you need to sort of show up on camera, take a little bit of that cream and put it on top as well. So do that on both sides. Um, and that'll sort of give you that that pop look and then what I like to do is take this same little cream the same little sculpting cream uh, for me is this is this one here um, but I like to take it and just use a little bit underneath my eyes anybody else kind of have a little darkness going on underneath their eyes I'm just saying yeah, right here. <laughs> okay I just take it and just kind of put it underneath um, rather the kids kept you up or you were working on a project for work, you just want to sort of take and uplift that under eye and sort of, and then when you do it, do it like this, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up to the temples. Look how lifted my face looks. Lift underneath the eye, highlight that brow. Um, we'd love to do that. And then take a little bit of that cream um, and just kind of put it right there on the tip of your nose 
kind of create a little bit of a highlighted look right there on the nose area um, is a good way to make that eye sort of pop. And then you can take the darker color that comes, if you have a little darker eyeshadow or something like that, um, definitely take and put it on your actual eyebrow to make your eyebrow pop, but then take it right there on the little crease of your eye, a little darker shadow. You don't have a lot of time. You just need to do a little something to spruce up your eyes. And to finish off your makeup in just five minutes, add mascara, some lip color, and you're done. Yeah. Well, look at so you go. Cool. Five minutes. That's gorgeous. Five Thank minutes. You. For more tutorials and inspiration, head over to Lamique Beauty on Instagram and all the social media platforms. We also have their information on salive.com. So many great tips I learned from Kim, including your mascara. So if you're one of those that does the oh, yeah, pumping because you want to get more, she says it dries mm -hmm. out your mascara. So instead, you go in there and you just kind of twist like that and then... You want to keep it, that air out yes, of there. Yes, makes it last longer. And she also said put it on the top and a little bit on the bottom. So I tried that today. So thanks, Kim. Yeah. All right. For more on Lamique makeup, head over to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab where we've provided a link or just snap that QR code on your screen. All right. Still ahead on the show. With a thirsty Thursday, the Pink Hill is sharing their new mocktail and cocktail menu for this spring. Plus, spring plants have arrived and we show you how to care for the citrus trees that do so well here in Texas. Stay with us.